essentially I experienced about 15 years, we can say, of a dating failure or um, dating without achieving the relationship that I wanted to (laughs) is another way we can say that. Um, And it uh, it was challenging. It was uh, painful, really. Um, After a while, I just started to feel that I wasn't worthy of relationship, right? I wasn't, I wasn't capable at creating relationship and, and also that I, I must not be worthy, right? Because it wasn't happening for me. Like I watched, I watched my friends, I watched all, all the people around me seem to be falling in love, of course. (laughs) Um, and I, it just wasn't happening for me. Like no, no matter what what I did. And I dated a lot too. I wasn't, I wasn't somebody, you know, a lot of the clients I work with now are people who, um, are, are experience a lot of fear around dating. Um, and so they, they, they haven't dated very much. I was really trying, <laughs> you know, like I was really, um, going out on dates. I was, uh, I was trying <laughs> and it was just, it was, it was not working. Um, it, it would inevitably end. I had sort of a, a three month, uh, <laughs> max on all the, on any, uh, relationship, right. On any dating, um, relationship that I developed, mm-hmm. if that, right. Like that was, that was the longest. Right. Um, and I just, yeah, I really got to that place of like, there must be something wrong with me. You know, there must be a, a problem, right? I, I am obviously not doing something right. Um, and, uh, I experienced a couple heartbreaks, you know, one of which was really devastating and in my entire life, like it really, um, yeah, really (laughs) brought me down, really brought me down, got me pretty depressed, uh, and, and, uh, really just, emotionally, uh, shut down. Really. I didn't, I didn't date for over a year after that happened. Um, and then as I was getting back out there and and it still wasn't working, um, it it just became clear that like, I needed, I needed help, Right. (laughs) you know, I needed, I needed some serious help. Um, and I began with books, <laughs> um, and, and the list that you read off so generously, uh, it, it just, it kind of like, I got into this, uh, cycle of like, of uh, study, you know, it turns out there's a ton of research out there about relationships and dating psychology and technique and theory and how to create relationship, um, and I, again, yeah, I started to piece together all of these threads that I, that I was discovering and, uh, created a new way to date, um, which I now call feminine seduction, um, cause it involves using, uh, ancient tantric feminine energy principles mixed in with modern dating technique. Um, and, it was immediately effective. I mean, it was, it was a complete, a really like almost overnight, um, shift of how I experienced dating. So it's, it was overnight how I showed up in dating change Mm -hmm. shift, uh, and then, uh, change in the experience of dating. So, um, I haven't looked back. So let's talk about now, um, this feminine energy. How do we, how are we stepping into that feminine energy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a fun part. Okay. So feminine energy uh, is opposite of masculine energy. And this isn't about being a woman or being a man. This is just an energy that anyone can embody. Um, And we all do embody. Uh, for dating as someone who is feminine, it's very supportive to use feminine energy rather than masculine energy. And, uh, what I found from my research is that, uh, actually a lot of, of the biology and the hormones involved in attraction, uh, kind of map what happens energetically in like ancient tantric, uh, theory, we can say, right. Philosophy, um, pretty well. It, they, they, they kind of overlap in terms of what they say about attraction and, uh, human relationships. 
Um, and so feminine versus masculine, feminine energy is being energy rather than doing energy, which is masculine. So when you date as a feminine person, you want to get more into who you are, like really into the energy of being, like being yourself, being authentic, uh, showing up as all of you, really, really getting in touch with yourself. Like that's, that's, that's the core of it is like being in touch with yourself. Um, whereas masculine people, uh, are, you know, predominantly testosterone based, generally speaking. And, uh, testosterone is an action oriented hormone. (laughs) Like it's about being in action. So, um, you know, allowing the masculine person to, to, to take the lead on, on the action of relationship, uh, is, can be really supportive. And the way to get, to get out of the trap of like wanting to be the one to be like, when are we going out? Where are we going? What are we doing? What time? You know, all of that kind of like, do, 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 yeah. um, is just to get back into being and really just getting in touch with who you are. So you can show up with that. Um, because that's really what's hot. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Another thing I did when I was experimenting was I always dated three people at once until I found someone I really liked. Um, Because I had that tendency, that was another, we didn't talk about that one. Uh, I had another tendency, which was to plan my future (laughs) with my date, Um, you know, to to be on it and already have decided what what our next date was and, you know, when we became exclusive and when we got together and, you know, even, I don't even know anymore. It was like years down the road or whatever. Um, Just, just kind of that planning, (laughs) um, it's just not supportive. It's really not supportive of building a relationship that is true and stable and healthy and, and the one that you want, um, because you start projecting rather than creating what you actually want with another person. Um, so those are two big ones too. Look at that. Don't take things personally and don't project a future with someone else. In our previous conversation, we were discussing how some men are intimidated by strong, independent women. Yeah. <laughs> and we were, and I kind of mentioned this before I was getting at that when I was saying, like, let's say if someone's a boss. Um, <laughs> sounds, mm-hmm. sounds interesting. When I Just say in like case. That. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a very independent, um, strong woman. And, mm-hmm. and what's interesting I'm finding is that there are a lot of really independent, strong women who are single and find it mm-hmm. difficult to find relationships. And in fact, I know a lot of high powered women who earn more than their partners and a lot of them are breaking up and their partners are not dealing with that, um, which I think is really another conversation, yeah. but um, mm-hmm. you know, how are there men out there who can cope with women being really successful and really independent? Um, without yet having that full experience, (laughs) um, my, my partner earns some good money, so it's good. Um, uh, so I, I can't speak from personal experience, but there's definitely, uh, the principle of, of feminine energy is that the feminine receives and the masculine gives. Um, and, uh, then there's sort of like the relationship psychology side of things where, uh, generally women want to be wanted and men want to be needed. So, um, there's a disconnect (laughs) for everyone because as a woman, I'm assuming like, well, I want you, so I'm fulfilling your need to be wanted. You're welcome. You know, (laughs) but, but what the man wants is, is to be needed. Um, my, my hunch and what I would say at this point is, is like, there are other needs besides money. (laughs) There are a lot of other needs in the world. Um, attention, affection, time, uh, love language fulfillment, Mm -hmm. um, uh, taking care of the house, you know, like this stereotype that that's like a feminine thing, false. Housework is doing, that is a masculine activity. It's active, it's masculine. Um, You know, there are lots of other ways to give to a partner besides money. 
Um, so at, you know, without thinking it through very much, just like throwing in an answer, I would say that like something to explore in that, in that situation would be the dynamic of like, well, how, how do I need you? You know, like Mm. I'm also highly independent, but I also, um, love receiving support. You know what? Um, it took me a long time to admit that it took me a long time to be able to do that. Um, but now it's something I treasure. I would not, I would not give that up being, um, being supported by someone emotionally, uh, you know, physically when I've had a hard day, like getting a hug, getting a foot rub, like, um, have getting a tea made for me, getting my light set up for my my (laughs) podcast, you know, like, uh, receiving support from someone is totally possible. Even when you are on it, you know, you're the, you're the boss of your business. You are, you are independent. You are getting it. You are wealthy. Um, I, I don't see it as being a full stop, right? Like a full, like, oh, the man can't handle this successful woman. It's just that maybe there's not space being made for his need to be needed in another way. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I'd be aware of that. I would first say it comes back to that knowing what you're looking for thing. Um, I would imagine there's something, the women that you mentioned, I I don't know them. I don't know any of those personally. I feel lucky right now. (laughs) Um, But, but I would imagine there's some need that they're getting met from those men. Um, And, you know, I, I don't know whether, whether it's healthy, right? Like maybe they just make them feel better about themselves or the sex is good. You know, I don't, I can't say, (laughs) um, but usually, I mean, humans are rational in the sense that we do things for a reason. Um, and so usually people are in a relationship for some reason. Um, maybe they're just lonely and they think that some company is better than no company. Um, again, I didn't want that. Right. Like that was one of the things is like, I wanted to be super in love. I wanted to be, to have this amazing emotional connection and be supported while I built this, you know, amazing company and brand that I'm, that I'm building. And, Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted it all, you know, I wanted all. And, uh, in my system, you can have it. (laughs) <laughs> in my system, you can have it. Um, and so I would just say, you know, checking, like, what am I getting from this relationship? If you find you're in something that's not quite standard that you would What's have expected. Payoff? Yeah. What, what are you getting? Cause I would guess there's something in there. Um, even if it's not, you know, <laughs> It's not what you actually said you wanted originally up front, um, but there, there's maybe something in there. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know if this is exactly relevant, but I'm going to put it in here now. We have this uh, idea that there's a scarcity of good men, um, which is really interesting because we don't have the the sort of trope that there's a scarcity of good women, but we do have it that there's a scarcity of good men. Um I, I, having done no research, <laughs> I want to reject that. Right. <laughs> um, Just my I, personal experience. <laughs> personal experience for right. truly once I started to date differently was that actually there are a ton of amazing men out there. Mm. Not all of them were great for me. Not all of them were ones I felt physically attracted to, or, you know, um, I saw our life paths matching up. But they were amazing. They were right. incredible. They were intelligent. They were thoughtful. They were um, loving. They were, uh, you know, ambitious. They were doing crazy cool things with their life, following their dreams, and really, you know, making things of themselves. And um, they were inspiring. You know, like they were they were inspiring men. Um, and. I think they're out there <laughs> on all continents because I was dating on three different continents when I was practicing. Um, they they're out there. They they really are. Um, and and so we got to let go of this idea that like there's just nobody out there for me. You know there are no great men. Um, I I would say it may be the way that you're dating or that you're not in touch with. 
uh, what you're really looking for. <laughs> and so you are accepting a lower standard, right? You're because, because you can't tell, because <laughs> you can't tell right away. Um, so it's sort of speaking of being a CEO, right? Like being a boss, um, you're not making the quick decision of like, oh yeah, that, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Or like, oh no, thank you. Right. Like, uh, in your business, you would be like, this sales system is not good. Right. Like I don't want to do this strategy. Right. Um, but in, when it comes to dating, we can get confused <laughs> and then that's when people are, are not, you know, they're not going for like, oh yeah, this is what I want. I'm going to, I'm going to get at that. What are some chemistry killers and what are some chemistry builders? Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. And is it possible, is it possible for you, let's say you've got the guy, you really like him, but there's not a lot of chemistry. Mm -hmm. Is is there a possibility of building that up? Are you willing to flirt more? Mm, Okay. Let's talk about that. How okay. Do we what does that What does that look like? <laughs> um, so uh, I teach chemistry building, right? Like I I I teach that you can create chemistry. It's not It's not always just an accident. It's It's something that you bring. Um, and the idea is that it's mainly flirting. So uh, it's that's the most direct way, right? Is is to is to get in that flirty energy. Uh, what flirting is is telling another person that you're interested in them. You're interested in who they are. Um, and then the next level is like you're interested in them sexually or romantically, right? Um, so you can start softly just by letting them know you like who they are. Um, compliments, right? Super easy. Just uh, really, <laughs> really straightforward. Just telling them something great about them or something that you notice. Just noticing something about someone uh, that isn't immediately obvious uh, can really make an impression like that, that it changes them. Right. So that's why I say like, are you willing to flirt more? Because when you change who you're being, you change who they're being. Um, and so if you're willing to bring a little bit more sexual tension and sexual energy to a connection, uh, they will likely, if they're, if they're capable at it, (laughs) um, they will likely begin to match you. Um, so if you can flirt, they'll, they will likely come back with, with flirting, you know? Um, and, uh, so there's conversational, right? There's, uh, that kind of spoken word, there's, uh, complimenting, there's, uh, just saying something funny, right? Being funny about something is, can be very flirtatious depending on how, how your, you tone, you tone, yeah, uh, your tone of right. voice is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, And then I also teach body, like physical flirting. So again, for feminine energy, it's that we talked about, it's the mess and the chaos. So it's nonlinear. So however you are sitting or standing, you position yourself asymmetrically. So one hand up, one hand down, off to the side, leaning back, um, hands crossed over each other, head tilted. Um, the, all of, all of asymmetry is kind of a feminine flirt, right? Um, crossing your legs, uh, you know, your hands over your knees, like you will likely feel a little bit more flirty when you do that. (laughs) Um, Interesting. Okay. Change your physiology. Yeah. You can lead your physiology to be more sensual. Um, and subconsciously, right. It's not like your other person, the person, your partner is going to say like, wow, now they're more sensual, right. but they will notice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they'll yeah. notice a shift in, in you and that can help them kind of get, uh, be comfortable with it too, because, um, something we don't think about, or I didn't think about when I was dating is like the other person's also scared. <laughs> Right. You know, like the other person is also experiencing their own baggage when they're dating. That like the other person, point. yeah, they're, they're on their own thing. You know what? Right. And, yep. um, maybe they're worried that they're not flirting enough. You know what I mean? Like they're worried that they're, how they're coming across is not, is not their best. Um, so it's, I, I recommend being generous with people and it's like, yeah, if you want to get to know them, like get to know them, you know, and if you want to be flirt, se- sexual with them, right? Flirt, right? Like bring that, if you want them to flirt, bring the flirtation. Um, 
it's so powerful. It's so powerful. Um, and you can have people who don't flirt flirting. <laughs> And what it, what are some chemistry killers then? I, I imagine it would be the uh, kind of the opposite of everything that you just mentioned. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> but let's let's exactly. spell out a few uh, top chemistry killers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So failing to add flirtation into your into dating, right? Um, if uh, especially a man doesn't sense that you are interested in him sexually, he's probably not going to stay interested very long. Um, you, know, it's it's just like. Uh, people usually need to feel that there's a chance, right? Like there's, 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 there's chemistry, right? They need to feel that there's chemistry there. They need to feel that there's, you know, special something there. Um, Another thing is going to be anytime your values misalign, uh, that's usually going to put somebody off. Um, You know, it's at least going to send them into a questioning place of like, I don't know if I can make this work. You know, Um, my uh, a client of mine was dating a man over the summer and she was really excited about him. They'd been going out for two months and then this whole vaccine thing happened and she wanted to be vaccinated and he didn't. And she couldn't move past that, you know, like it was, she really liked him and, um, he just, he just politically did not align with her values. And, um, she said goodbye to him, but it was tough, you know, because it was, it, but it was just like, yeah, that's a, for that's her, a that was breaker. a down yeah. deal breaker. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm Other sure that's things. actually been happening a lot. That's that's a really yeah. interesting example because, you know, there's certainly been a lot of conflict. Yeah. The pandemic situation, so. Exactly. And and there's so much uh, divisiveness polarity. in general. Yeah. Yeah, polarity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's, not not quite as fun and sexy as the masculine feminine no, stuff. No, definitely, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> definitely not fun at all. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that that's a really good one, the values. And what else? What else is a big industry? Um yeah, any any time that sort of like there's a disconnect emotionally, like what, like what I want and what you want is just not, it's just not going to happen. Right. Like if someone, if someone comes to the relationship and they're like, yeah, I want to get married, you know? Um, and that person doesn't want that, like that's, it's probably going to be a little bit of a downer, right. It's going to, and then once you have a wedge, (laughs) it tends to drive, you know, a greater distance, um, create a bigger gap rather than drawing you together, which is the real goal of dating is creating more and more intimacy. Um, you know, beyond that, uh, it's pretty emotional, right? Uh, falling in love is completely emotional. Um, so it's, it's as long as there, it's, there's no momentum, right? There's no, that you're not kind of growing, um, your intimacy, you're not growing your, your connection. Uh, it, it can fizzle, like it can just fizzle. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, if it's something you really want, you gotta go for it. In our previous conversation, you mentioned seven shifts to create a new experience in dating. Can you share with us what those seven shifts are? Yes. So these are the seven shifts of feminine energy. So that first one we talked about is from be, from doing to being. So really just getting connected to that, to that being, to that uh, energy of existence and authenticity. Um, the next one would be going from giving to receiving. So um, as especially independent women, we really know we have a lot to give and we're going to give it to you. <laughs> um, but, but really shifting back into that energy of being receptive and practicing receiving attention, affection, love, physical touch, gifts. You know, I, I love to teach receiving through the five love languages because it's, it's love. <laughs> um, if we can really focus on receiving love, it's, it's much more effective for feminine people. Um, another one would be pace. So femininity, feminine energy is timeless. It doesn't have, uh, it's not linear, right? Like masculine energy is linear. So feminine energy is a spacious timelessness. And so not going into, you know, this is how much time this is going to be, or like three dates until we can have sex, you know, like, uh, getting out of that, um, 
time-based thinking and dating. And this kind of gets back to that uh, agenda thing we were talking about earlier. So really shifting out of agenda and and uh, sort of time ultimatums, we can call them, um, and into uh, just like a slow, enjoy, sensual enjoying of, of being with someone. The experience of being with someone, which is again what dating is, is like learning them, being with them, time with them. Mm -hmm. Um, another one would be shifting out of the mental, uh, into the body. So really getting in touch with your body and what your body wants and needs. Uh, it's a great thing to be able to communicate to masculine person, what you need when you know what your body needs, right? Do you need a glass of water? Do you need, uh, you know, do you need to go get food right now? <laughs> do you need uh, a blanket? Cause you're, cause you're cold, right? Like these very basic physical, body <laughs> needs are great ways to allow someone to support you. Um, also, uh, because your body is where you experience your sexuality, right? So really getting in touch with your body can help you up appear more uh, sensual and and show up with more sexuality in dating, um, which is a turn on. <laughs> it's literally a turn on, right? So you want to bring that. You want to bring that. And and people bring it to, to various levels, right? Like some people are really out there with their sexuality. Some people are quiet about it. Um, but just having a connection to it is enough. Like your level of connection is the right level kind of a thing. Um, another thing is getting out of, uh, initiation or end result. Like, again, there's kind of an agenda thing in there, um, and moving into process. So feminine energy is about process. Um, so really just being aware of the moment, right? Like it's about being in the moment. How do you feel about this person right now? Right. How does the state treat you today? Um, what are you feeling in conversation with them? You know, where do they take you on a date or where, you know, what, what happens there, you know, really getting into the process of like, how do I feel here with this person? Cause that's, right. that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, oh man, I don't even know how many I'm on now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, well. I try to go through a mental list. Uh, yeah. And then getting out of the structure and into the mess. So getting into a little bit more of that, like, can you ride the waves of being with another person? Because there are waves. <laughs> right. I tell you what, relationships, human relationships are, um, are messy. Uh, you know, even when they're incredibly beautiful, they're also, um, they also require some, some, uh, awareness, self-awareness and, uh, generosity, right. As we talked about, like maybe your, your partner's love language isn't yours. And so you need to learn a new habit. Um, it, it's, it, it's, it's not perfect. <laughs> Right. Relationships yeah. are, are imperfect, even when they're incredible and fulfilling and, and beautiful. Um, and last but not least is the emotional, right? So shifting away from this kind of logistical thinking of like, uh, how am I going to get this man? How am I going to, you know, get this next date, right? We talked about a little bit like, oh, how do I get him to take me on another date? Um, how do I get him to call me? Um, it's, it's just about, uh, it's about the emotional piece, right? So, and that's why I say responding with that emotion of like, I'm thinking about you. I'd love to see you or, you know, just anything emotional, right? It's, it's any emotion that you're feeling, at that time, um, and, and, and throughout the whole relationship, uh, for me, when I was stuck in that three month dating <laughs> mess, uh, it was, it, it was because I was failing to go into the emotional intimacy. Full disclosure, that was the issue for me was that I, I was fine, uh, doing the attraction thing. I was fine doing this kind of like first date. Like that was fun. We were having a good time. Um, the sexual sexiness, like the sexual aspect was a little less comfortable for me, a little bit more shame and stuff in that space for me. Um, and then the emotional intimacy, I just, I was not interested, <laughs> you know, I just, I was not, um, I wasn't skilled and I wasn't comfortable there. And so I, um, I failed to create it. 
over and over again. Um, the good news is you can create it (laughs) and you don't, it doesn't need to be like, you don't have to become a therapist or a coach in order to be able to create an emotional space for someone, um, or yourself. You, you can be in, be emotional at the level you're comfortable with, uh, fairly easily. (laughs) Um, but, but you do want it in dating you, even for casual relationships so much or friendship, friendship is the same thing. Uh, emotional intimacy is so important because that is the basis of the trust, which is what keeps your relationship, uh, alive. (laughs) It's what keeps it alive. And you really want that. You want that there. Thanks for listening to the Rebel Love Podcast, the podcast about love, sex, and relationships. If you like this episode, please support us by subscribing and leaving a review on your favorite podcast platform and find all the details of this episode and more at rebellove.com forward slash podcast.